Hello everyone. I am Dr. Naima, a final year resident, going to present my paper on a case report that is multi imaging modality including 3D CT and MRI used in diagnosis of a forgot duplication cyst that is neuroendocrine cyst. Oh, that for this paper include Dr. Shakunta Bhav, Professor and Chairperson, and Dr. Saima, Assistant Professor in the Department of Radio Diagnosis of Gavla Nehru Medical College and Hospital, Aligarh. Coming to the introduction, cystic masses in the mediastinum are well marginated fluid filled lesions lined by an epithelium. Major cystic masses in mediastinum include congenital benign cysts, which include forked duplication cysts, pericardial cysts, and thymic cysts. Meningocele, metrocystic keratoma, lymphangioma, mediastinal abscess, and pancreatic pseudocysts are other differential diagnoses. Cystic masses are mostly due to developmental abnormalities. Most common developmental cysts in the posterior mediastinum include forgot duplication cysts, which includes bongogenic cysts, neuronic cysts, and esophageal duplication cysts. Incidence of forgot duplication cysts is very rare. However, they are almost asymptomatic and are found incidentally, or they can present with vague abdominal respiratory complaints due to their pressure, pressure effect. Coming to our case, a six month old child presented with failure to thrive and jaundice. The child underwent a routine workup. Hemograms showed anemia, which on further workup was diagnosed as hemolytic anemia. Liver function tests showed normal liver enzymes with raised unconjugated bilirubin. Rest of the blood examination was within normal limit. On routine test X-ray shows a suspicious abnormality, which was uh, which abnormality was found for which the baby undergone further workup. On test X-ray AP view showed severe dextroscoliosis of the thoracic spine with likely hemivertebra of T2 on left and T6 on right with widened posterior aspect of the 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th ribs on the left side. Also shows an increased radiopacity in the left upper and middle lung zone which is not crossing above the clavicle and vessels are clearly visualized through the mass uh, that is hilum overlay sign and the cardiac margins are also separately and clearly visualized, indicating there is no silhouetting. Also note that blunted left CP angle, which indicates that uh, there is pleural effusion. All these points favor towards a likely posterior mediastinal mass, for which the patient underwent a USG of thorax, which showed an unequal lesion with well-defined wall in the posterior mediastinum, which is uh, actually extending from the tail of pancreas, However, the separately visualized clean stomach and pancreas appears to be normal. The lesion, uh, the wall of the lesion shows positive gut signature. The fluid from the lesion was aspirated under aseptic precautions, which showed reactive fluid. Amylase and lipase was estimated to rule out the remote possibility of pancreatic pseudocyst. Further, the child underwent a CT scan, which shows dorsal scyphoscoliosis with fully segmental hemivertebra of T2 on left and T6 on right. That is vertebral segmentation anomaly with remodeling of the shape of posterior aspect of 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th ribs on the left side. On axial cuts of bone window shows hemivertebra of T2 on left and T6 on right. Also shows a large, well-defined, irregular, thick, enhancing wall tubular cystic lesion involving the posterior mediastinum on left paravertebral space adjacent to the esophagus on left side and left main bronchus, is, which is being displaced anteriorly and superiorly and lesion found to be extending from the T2 superiorly to L1 vertebra inferiorly. The lesion is insinuating through the left 10th intercostal space into the paraspinal muscles on left side and few insinuating areas into the left neural foramina. However, there was no obvious connection with spinal cord was noted. Showed minimal free fluid in left pleural space, suggestive of pleural effusion. And either the lesion is causing passive subsegmental collapse of the posterior segment of left upper lobe, lingular lobe, and the basal segments of left lower lobe. Further, an MRI was done to rule out any possible communication with, to the spinal cord, which again showed dorsal kyphoscoliosis, that is dextroscoliosis of the upper thoracic spine with fully segmental hemivertebra of T2 on left and T6 on right, with remodeling of the shape of posterior aspect of 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th ribs on the left side. Axial cuts showing hemivertebra of T2 on left and T6 on right. Again, sagittal section shows a large 
well defined irregular thick enhancing wall tubular cystic lesion in the posterior mediastinum adjacent to the left paravertebral space adjacent to esophagus and the left main bronchus extending from T2 to L1 vertebrae. The lesion appears to be hyperindens on T2 with hypoindens wall and which appears to be isoindens on T1 with hyperindens wall and the wall appears to be significantly en enhancing after contrast and administration. The lesion is insinuating to the left in the intercostal space into the paraspinal muscles on the left side and few insinuating areas into the left neural foramina on left side with no obvious communication with the spinal canal was not. There was no evidence of any diffusion restriction, which also excludes the remote possibility of abscess in the mediastinum. Final impression made was that the dorsal kyphoscoliosis with vertebral segmentation anomaly and remodeling of the left lower ribs in the posterior aspect with a large, well-defined, irregular, enhancing Thick wall tubular cystic lesion involving the left paravertebral space adjacent to esophagus and left main bronchus. Hence, the baby was provisionally diagnosed as a case of forgot duplication cyst that is likely neuroendrexis. This was considered as a neuroendrexis because uh, along with the cystic lesion, we found vertebral segmentation anomaly. Baby was planned for thoracotomy. However, operative procedure is delayed to improve the health status of the baby. Coming to the discussion, foregut duplication cyst is an abrupt development of the primitive cut. This includes predominantly of three types, that is neuroendric cyst, bronchogenic cyst, and esophageal duplication cyst. Neuroendric cyst, as we saw, these are the failure of elementary tract to separate from the primitive neural cyst, leaving a persistent communication between the foregut and the spinal cord, or herniation of the endoderm of the embryonic foregut into the dorsal exoderm. Histologically, both neural elements and gastrointestinal epithelium is present. Half of the cases are associated with cervical and upper thoracic vertebral anomalies like hemivertebrae, butterfly vertebrae, anterior spina bifida, and scoliosis. Vertebral defects are located cranial to the mediastinal cyst. They may or may not have a spinal connection. Sometimes a fibrous band connection with the spinal cord is seen. Coming to bronchogenic cysts, these are abnormal budding of the ventral forget that distinct from the tracheobronchial tree. These are located in the medi middle mediastinum, histologically shows typical respiratory epithelium, may have congenital pulmonary malformation. Esophageal duplication cysts arise from the dorsal forget that are distinct from the elementary tract. Majority are located in the right posterior inferior mediastinum. Histology shows submucosal or muscular layer of the gastrointestinal tract. 12 percentage have gastrointestinal malformations. Imaging shows solitary bell circumcised round or oval mass with fluid attenuation. Bronchogenic cysts are usually found in the middle mediastinum near carina, less frequent in other areas of mediastinum. Esophageal duplication cysts are located along the esophagus in lower posterior mediastinum. Most of the neuroendocysts cysts are located in the posterior mediastinum and the associate anomalies are again uh, a clue for uh, differentiating types of cysts. Associated anomalies like um, gastrointestinal malformations are associated with esophageal duplication cysts, and um, pulmonary malformations are associated with bronchogenic cysts, and uh, vertebral segmentation anomalies are associated with neuroendric cysts. Treatment includes surgical removal of the cystic lesion as a definitive treatment. Malignant degeneration of the duplication cyst is possible, hence surgical dissection is advocated. These are my references. Thank you.